In this video, we'll talk about the appendix on ultrasound. First, we'll see how to find the appendix, features of normal appendix on ultrasound, acute appendicitis, and we'll see a few cases and differential diagnosis. We'll start with how to find the appendix as it can be very challenging to find in many patients uh, maybe because of obesity or its variable locations so here is a generalized approach which you can follow we'll start with finding the colon on the right side of the abdomen and it will usually be filled with air artifacts something like that then we need to trace it down to find the cecum and the ileocecal junction like that let's see that again find the colon trace it down up to the cecum and the ileocecal junction there and the appendix usually lies around 2 to 3 centimeters below the ileocecal junction Now the tip of the appendix can be variable in its location which makes it even more challenging to find in some patients. These locations are postileal, preileal, pelvic, subsecal and retrocecal. Out of these the most common location is the retrocecal which is also the hardest to find on ultrasound as cecum is usually filled with air and it obscures the appendix behind it. Now this is the normal appendix which is typically described as a thin meaning less than 6 mm in diameter, a thin tubular blind ending, aperistaltic and compressible structure. These features differentiate it from other small and large bowel loops which will not be blind ending and will show peristalsis. Any bowel wall, including the appendix, shows something called a gut signature, which is the characteristic appearance of the bowel wall on ultrasound. It refers to this alternate hyper and hypoechoic appearance of different layers of the bowel on ultrasound, like this. Now coming to acute appendicitis, let's see this case. As you can see here, this thickened tubular structure, which is surrounded by this echogenic fat, which represents inflammatory changes. And on Doppler, it shows uh, increased vascularity like this. So this was a case of acute appendicitis. On CT, you can see a dilated appendix with surrounding fat stranding like this in this case we can see the dilated appendix and the surrounding hypoechoic material and this inflamed fat below that so this was a case of ruptured appendicitis a contained perforation or a localized collection is more common than free spill in ruptured appendix. We should also look for any associated lymphadenopathy in which above 8 mm of short axis diameter is a cutoff. This was another patient who came with right iliac fossa pain and this turned out to be a case of ureteric calculus rather than appendicitis. So there are many conditions which can mimic uh, or present like appendicitis and we should be aware of them. The first and most important one is mesenteric lymphadenitis which is in fact the second most common cause of right lower quadrant pain especially in children. So we should look out for any enlarged lymph nodes in the abdomen and we should also rule out any other causes of uh, secondary lymphadenopathy then comes enterocolitis or infectious 
uh, ileocecitis in which you can see there is this diffuse uh, circumferential wall thickening of the terminal ileum and the cecum. Epiploic appendagitis is another condition in which you can see this homogeneous mass like appearance of the fat adjacent to the colon. On CT it shows a ring like hyperdensity adjacent to the colon. In omental infarct you can see this inflamed intraperitoneal fat uh, without any underlying bowel wall thickening or any other cause and shows omental caking on CT. Diverticulitis can be another differential which will show wall thickening of the large bowel. Then ureteric calculus can also present like acute appendicitis. Uh, of course there are few other things which can present like appendicitis like gynecological conditions like hemorrhagic cyst or tube ovarian abscess, ovarian torsion or things like abdominal wall hematoma. So this was the end of this video and see you again next time.